All right, welcome to Coffee with Marcus. In today's show, we will talk about what's happening in the markets today, and this will only take us two minutes or so. Then we will talk about three stock market investing strategies, and uh, they are perfect actually for beginners. So, yeah, we'll talk about this. Next, we'll talk about my current trades and how I made, uh, yeah, how I'm making money as a trader. And after this, I will answer your question. So, put them in the chat and I'll answer as many as I can later in the show. So, as you can see, we have a full program. So, let's get started. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the markets. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises, and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then click on like right now and let's get started. All right, fantastic. Let's get started. And let's just spend two minutes on what's happening in the markets right now. And uh, let's just jump over to the iPad. And here is where we see what is happening in the markets today. And it's not a whole lot. So the Dow is slightly down 0.2% for the day. So slightly retreating here. Looking at the S&P 500, the S&P 500 is pretty much unchanged, as you can see, down two points, which is nothing. And the Nasdaq is slightly up. If you take a look at the five minute chart, you pretty much see what was happening today. So for the Dow, we were opening slightly higher, dropped at first and now are just diddling sideways. So this is what has been happening. And yes, diddling is a technical term. Uh, for the S&P, recovering a little bit better after the initial slide. So right now recovering, going into the close. And let's take a look at the Nasdaq. Nasdaq, very similar picture here like the S&P 500. Again, we're looking at a five minute chart here. So this is what's happening. So why, 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 why are the markets diddling around today? What is happening? Well, on Friday, we had the unemployment data and it came out much better than expected. And so Markets were doing good today. Some COVID concerns initially, the Delta variant. Uh, we also have some uh, some concerns in crude oil. So crude oil earlier today has been down as much as four and a half percent. Right now it's only down 2.1 percent only, right? Uh, but still down for the day. So I want to show you exactly what I did today, how I'm trading the market. So I'll show you my trades here in just a moment. But First of all, um, I actually want to talk about a different topic. And uh, let me just prepare this because we'll cut this part out as a shorter video because we'll talk about stock market strategies. <laughs> OK. All right. So let's talk about three stock market investing strategies for beginners. I mean, as you know, right now, the markets are making new all time highs all the time. If you are taking a look at the S&P, it's pretty much up, up and away. So how can you take advantage of this? So I want to show you three strategies that you can use in your trading right away. OK, so let's start with the first strategy. And first of all, let's define what is a strategy. Well, a strategy is different than just listening to the talking heads on TV or maybe on a uh, on an Internet forum would say, buy this. Well, you see, with, with a strategy, you know what to trade. This is number one. You know when to enter and you know when to exit. Trading strategy has actually a little bit more discipline built into this. So let's talk about uh, three popular trading strategies. The first one, and I'm using my <clears throat> handy dandy iPad here. Uh, to take some notes. Uh, let me just see. I thought I had a notepad up. I do not. So I'm drawing right on the chart if it is OK with you. So the first tr trading strategy that you can use is value investing. And uh, this is pretty much what Warren Buffett does, what Charlie Munger does, right? This is where they're buying stocks that are good for the long run. And the idea here is that you only invest in what you understand. I think there's a direct quote from Warren Buffett uh, who said, just invest in what you understand. And I believe it was Peter Lynch who said, well, just invest in what you are using every day. So let me show you some of the, the value stocks that 
Warren Buffett is probably interested in uh, that you might be interested in. So a few examples here. I mean, Target is one of them. And I want to show you a weekly chart of Target. So if you take a look at Target, we see that Target is pretty much uh, for the past few years up, up and away. I mean, here we are seeing the last three years uh, since 2018. I could probably go further back. But you see, everybody is shopping at Target and therefore this is good for value investing. And well, I'll tell you the pros and cons and the other two investing strategies here in a moment as well. So why do I call it investing? Because it's basically a buy and hold strategy. And I want to show you a few more examples. Now, the drawdowns here are that you are actually experienced some drawdowns. So it can happen that with this stock, your portfolio might actually be down 20%, 30%. But over the long run, as you can see, Target here moved from $60 in the last three years to right now $262. Let me give you a few other ones. I mean, just think about what else do you do every day? As an example, I mean, probably you use a, a cell phone, right? I mean, I'm using, as you can see here, an Apple device. So uh, let's take a look at Apple. And if you can see here, same picture, right? I mean, Apple up, up and away with small uh, with some drawdowns that we have along the way. But uh, three years ago, Apple has been trading split adjusted around $45 today at $146. So almost tripled in three years. Um, what else are you using every single day? Well, we are here on YouTube. So uh, parent company would be Alphabet, which is Google, right? And you're probably using Google every single day. So as you can see here, also very, very typical value investing. So um, what, what some people do with this value investing, they combine it with dividend investing, looking for companies that pay a high dividend. But you see, with dividend investing, you usually get a, a few percent a year. But uh, if you are just going for uh, some of the value investing here. And I mean, some say Google is more growth investing. I think it's value investing because we're using it. Uh, let me just so give you another example here, Home Depot. I mean, Home Depot is definitely value investing. And if you look back over the last three years, we also see that, um, what was it in 2018, trading at around $160, right now at $329. So if something is doubling or tripling in a year, that is pretty good. And Again, what uh, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was Peter Lynch who said it, just look around you and look what is in your uh, pantry. Uh, look what you're doing every day, what you're using and buy these kind of stocks. Okay, so this is what some people do. And then on the other hand, number two, we do have growth investing. And this is where with growth investing, you're investing in companies with growth potential, sometimes they are not yet profitable. So the idea is that you're becoming an early investor. And let me give you a few examples here. I mean, now they are profitable, but Facebook in the beginning, I mean, this is definitely a growth company here. Companies like Tesla, as you know, uh, the Cinderella story here of the electric vehicle makers. I, I mean, at some point trading, uh, let me just uh, bring it up here. Yeah, split adjusted probably around, uh, what, $40 here now at 714. It doesn't come without risk because as you can see, there were several drawdowns along the way and uh, it has pulled back from 900. So you're really more like an early investor. A few others here, uh, Etsy, for example, would also be in this category of growth investing. So again, the idea is to invest in companies that have growth potential. Now, Etsy is also a profitable company now, but as you can imagine, if you're going back to 2016, uh, when they started, uh, no, they didn't start at 2016, but if you just look at the chart here, uh, we see that Etsy was trading at around $8. And today, uh, I mean, just uh, what, five years later, they're at $182. So here with these growth companies, we are no longer looking uh, for doubling a year or tripling over three years, right? I mean, here we are looking for 10x or 20x. Uh, a few other companies in this category here is Uber. Now, as you can see, Uber uh, just started trading in uh, June 2019. So right here, uh, this is June 2019. So relatively a young trading, com uh, young company here on the exchanges. 
I uh, started trading uh, somewhere here around 38 or 40 dollars and this is pretty much where they are right now so you're getting in in the very very early stages here and this is what we call growth investing let me give you uh, two more uh, examples here so for example Airbnb also a company that just recently started trading so uh, they started late in 2020 uh, the IPO price here was uh, what at around uh, 140 right now they're trading at 149 so you're not making a whole lot but the idea is to get in early here last example uh, that falls in the category here is coin and again with these growth companies they do come with risk but the idea is that they are going up 20x 30x but again more risky than definitely value investing investing in a in a target or in a walmart is almost like a sure thing or in a google or in an apple i mean uh, even Amazon, uh, oops, AMZN, uh, there we go. Amazon recently dropping uh, a little bit, but uh, if we just zoom out here and see what happened over the last three years, then you know that Amazon is another company like up, up and away. Now, um, these are two ways and I wanna show you the, the third way and then I wanna show you exactly how to do this. But uh, let's talk about the third way and the third way of investing is actually trading. So this is where Number three, we are talking about technical trading. And what does this mean? Technical trading means where you're less looking at the fundamentals. This is when you're looking at indicators. And you know this is what I like to do with the Power X strategy. I like to look at three indicators. I like to use uh, the RSI. I like to look at the stochastics and I like to look at the MACD. So in this case, you're not concerned of what the underlying company does. And uh, later today, I'll show you some trades here uh, that I personally did today and over the past few weeks here. Uh, but this is where you're just looking at the indicators and your outlook is also rather short. So with, with technical trading, and I just abbreviated here with, uh, with technical trading, there we go, right? Your, your investment horizon is usually just a few days to a few weeks, while with the investing styles that we talked about earlier, whether it is value investing or growth investing, it is usually several months and often years. I mean, what's Warren Buffett's horizon for investing? It is usually 30 years, right? <laughs> okay, anyhow, you get the idea. So um, let's uh, briefly talk about the strategies that I personally use, and then I I show you how you can do it. Uh, and I show you actually three ways uh, from the laziest to the most involved. So if you if talk about, uh, for example, uh, number one, value investing, this is where I'm using a strategy that is called the wheel strategy. And the idea here is to buy stocks at a discount. And we are doing this by selling puts. So if you're selling puts at a certain strike price, and let me show you exactly uh, what I did earlier today. So uh, for example, um, I traded UAL, uh, United Airlines, and what I did is that I sold the 43 put. Sell the 43 put. What does this mean? It means that I can buy shares uh, for UAL at 43. As you can see right now, they're trading at 46. So it is at a at a discount here. And uh, for me, that is a pretty good discount. So if you're zooming out and uh, talk about value investing, I mean, is UAL uh, United Airlines, is that a value stock? Well, I definitely don't consider this being a growth stock. And uh, if you're just looking back uh, in our uh, horizon here over the past, uh, let's say here we are looking at 10 years, right, where UAL went from uh, $20 up to $100. So this is a, a 5x over 10 years. Or if you just look over the past few years, so here, uh, 2018, they were trading at $60 going to $100. So that's around uh, the 2x, what I consider growth stocks, right? So no longer these, cra uh, no, sorry, value stocks, not these crazy growth stocks. So that's what I do with the wheel strategy. With the wheel strategy, I'm mainly looking for uh, number one, that's what we talked about, the strategy. I'm looking for value stocks. All right, so number two, how do I personally invest in growth stocks? So uh, with 
Number two, growth stocks. This is where I'm combining number two and number three, these strategies, right? Because this is where I use uh, the Power X strategy because I'm not smart enough to decide whether Uber will go what uh, to 200, 300 or 400 dollars, right? But I like to look at the indicators. For me, they're providing an objective view on the markets of whether I should buy, sell or hold. And again, my horizon here is just a few days to a few weeks. So uh, at most, I'm usually typically in a stock here between 8 to 20 days. So this is one to three weeks. Now, um, <clears throat> let's talk about how you can do these things. So as an example, uh, let me just show you uh, the, the lazy way to invest in, for example, value stocks. So the, the lazy way is that you can just buy some mutual funds or ETFs. As an example, the SPY uh, is an ETF that you can buy right now for $442 and it is mirroring the S&P 500. So as you can see, the S&P 500 right now is trading at 4,432. So the SPY at approximately one tenth. And if you're investing in an index fund like this, over time, your investment will go up. Well, of course, you will have the drawdowns here that come with the overall market. But as you can see, if you go from 2012 uh, to what here, 2021, uh, we're going from around 120 to 420. So this is pretty much a line line with the market. Uh, if you want to trade rather uh, the Dow Jones, so the ETF here is the DI Diamonds DIA. If you want to trade the more aggressive NASDAQ, that is QQQ. You can also trade bonds or uh, the longer year, uh, longer term yields. So TLT, for example, is mirroring the 20 year bonds. And as you can see, that's what you could do here if you're into bonds. Uh, I would say if you're really lazy and don't want to mess around with trading, uh, this would be a way to go. Uh, you could also go uh, with certain indices uh, or in uh, sectors. So for example, GLD, uh, is the spider gold trust. So this is mirroring gold. If you don't want to buy physical gold, you can do this. Or you can go uh, with one of the uh, more aggressive ones, uh, Kathy Woods Arc Innovation Fund. Uh, you can certainly do this. So this innovation fund is investing in growth stocks, right? So you need to know what they do. But in growth stocks, like for example, uh, DKNG, uh, which is DraftKings, uh, I believe that she also uh, recently uh, invested into Hood, Robin Hood. Not quite sure if she's still invested in there, uh, but heavily definitely in Tesla invested. So this is a, a fund, the ARKK Innovation Fund, that is pretty much investing in very aggressive growth stocks. Now, if you uh, prefer to invest in real estate without actually investing in real estate, there is the, uh, VNQ, which is Vanguard's real estate uh, investment trust. And as you can see, uh, this is also over time nicely going up. I mean, it's not as aggressive, but as you can see over the last uh, 10 years from around $48 to what? $106 today, you get the idea. So what is another way? Because I said uh, you can do this in three ways and I'm going from laziest to most active. So the laziest way is uh, just to buy these uh, these ETFs or uh, funds. So the next one is stocks. And I gave you some examples of stocks that you could invest in, uh, whether you want to go for growth stocks or whether you want to go for value stocks. So you can certainly do this. Uh, since I've only shown you these stocks earlier, you don't have to go this into, into more detail. And now as a bonus, what we can do is also use options. And if you're new to options, I made a playlist. It's called Options 101. I'll link to it in the descriptions and options are perfect for smaller accounts. Now, the trading strategies that I personally trade, as you can see, I've written a couple of books of them on the wheel option strategy and the power X strategy. So if you're interested in this, I'll link to them in the description. I'll be happy to ship you a book for $4.95. Uh, th this is where you can learn more about the strategies in detail. And I think that options are fascinating uh, because especially when you're buying options, right? Uh, they have limited risk and, uh, pretty high uh, reward potential here. Anyhow, so uh, in a nutshell, we talked about three investing strategies. One being investing in value stocks and uh, dividend investing is a subcategory of this. Number two, 
investing in growth stocks. And then number three, technical trading. Okay, and uh, we talked about the three ways to do it. So you can either do it, number one, uh, through investing in ETFs and funds, number two, buying stocks outright, or uh, actually going for options, which is even more fun. And this is what I personally like to do. Wow, there's a lot of chicken scratch. Anyhow, the most important thing is that a trading strategy has actually three things that you need to write down. That is what to trade. Are you trading value stocks or growth stocks or maybe a mixture of both? Number two, when exactly do you enter? And you could use technical indicators as I do, or you could just use fundamentals or maybe listen to other people, which I think is the worst thing to actually trade or invest. And number three is when do you exit? Meaning when do you take profits? Okay, hope you find this helpful. If you did, there's a few other videos hopefully popping up right now. And uh, feel free to take a look at them, learn more about the markets, and then go and make money. <laughs> All right, so stay here because uh, in a moment we'll talk about my current trades. Um, this was just a, a quick overview for people who are new to this channel here. And if you're new and you like this quick overview, um, just give me a, do me a favor and click on like really quick. And now we will move on and talk about my current trades and what exactly I did today. And Jim, yes, the handy dandy iPad was definitely busy today. So, um, but, but let me show you of uh, what I did today and then also the positions that I'm in, switching back to the, uh, the handy dandy iPad. And I wanna switch back to, to daily charts. And uh, actually, let me, let me show you uh, quickly my account. And here is the trade summary. So what I did today, and uh, this morning we traded with our mastermind members. So uh, we traded the wheel strategy and we, we sold puts on AEO. And let me tie this uh, a little bit all together. Um, so AEO is American Eagle. And um, let me share the iPad here. Uh, American Eagle Outfitters, it's a retailer. It's a retailer uh, similar to uh, JWN, Nordstrom, right, uh, Rost, um, Ross store, so RST, uh, KSS. And, and again, we want to zoom out here a little bit and take a look at weekly charts and see what has been happening here over the past few weeks. And uh, this is where this morning American Eagle Outfitters was actually dropping. And if you if you look at this, it's, it's a stock that uh, over the past year had some wild swings. So it's not going as smoothly as Target. But overall, I consider this uh, a value investing stocks. I mean, they have many stores and uh, I mean, they, they have been around for quite a while. Don't know exactly for how long. Um, so in, in 2016, they were trading at around $14. We're hovering around there going up as much as $28 in 2018. So they were almost doubling. Then uh, here recently during the pandemic, uh, we're going back to $7. And right now they're up to what? 33.69 as of this morning. So here's what I did. Um, so when we looked at it this morning, and we especially if you look at the last uh, few months here, uh, we see that uh, ever since uh, what would it what would I say here? Probably mid-April that AEO American Eagle Outfitters have been very solidly trading above 32. So this morning uh, we sold puts. Uh, with a strike price of 32 and uh, they expiring this Friday. So if American Eagle Outfitters stays above 32, I'm just collecting the premium. And to give you an idea, so for this trade here, uh, the total premium that I received was $558. So that's um, that's actually not bad for a week, right? Uh, $558. Again, if it uh, trades above, it will simply expire worthless. If it trades below 32, I will get assigned shares at 32. And I'm okay with this because if I look back what happened over the past few weeks, it was trading pretty much between 32 and 39 in a range. And I'm trying to pick it up here at the lower range. So I'm, I'm not worried at all if I'm getting assigned here. So American Eagle Outfitters, um, also if we, if we look at them and if you look at the, the earnings over the past few years, See, uh, trading views give us uh, the earning. We see a uh, very super solid revenue. And uh, the little green dot 
is the profitability. So they have been profitable for the past few years. Now with retail, it's, it's not a whole lot of profitability as you can see here. In 2020, they lost money. Not surprised, right? I mean, stores were probably closed. Nobody went shopping. But overall, I believe that this is a good company. So this is one of the trades that I did this morning. Let's go back uh, to another one. So another one that I did is uh, selling puts on UAL. So UAL, United Airlines, and I mean, I'm kind of biased because this is my go-to airline. Uh, I'm frequently flying United Airline. And if you're looking at uh, the daily chart right here, let me just see, I'm on the daily chart. Then we see, uh, let's actually go back to a weekly chart. And again, I consider this more uh, like a, a value investing that we previously talked about. So we see that before the pandemic, they have been very solid, uh, what, between 65 and uh, 95. Then we had the pandemic hit. And like many airlines, uh, cruise lines, hospitality industry, they took a hit. So uh, recently they were on the upswing. And right now, since we are concerned about the Delta variant and now also the Lambda variant, they have actually been moving lower. Uh, but this were long term, I wouldn't mind owning United Airlines at the strike price that I sold. And the strike price that I sold United Airlines at was uh, 43. So let me just mark it. And uh, here, this is, yeah, actually, <laughs> let's try to be a little bit more precise. This year is around 43. See, this is the, the low that was recently established uh, late July right here. And uh, pretty much since March, uh, United Airlines has been trading above 43 up to 62. So here, I believe in this uh, in this company, looking at the at the underlying fundamentals, we also see that last year obviously was tough for United Airlines. But before that, in 2017, 2018, 2019, as you can see, revenue is growing, profits are growing. So all is good. Last year hit, obviously. Uh, but overall, this for me seems to be a solid company. So um, that's why I sold the 43 strike price. And again, if United Airlines will stay below 43, I will just keep the whole premium of $506, uh, which is not bad. If it closes below 43, I will get assigned. And uh, this is what I was looking for. And again, I got all of these from uh, our scanner. So this here is the PowerX uh, optimizer. And you see right here, uh, United Airlines and American Eagle Outfitters were uh, stocks that popped up on the scanner this morning. So annualized, I would make 41% uh, here uh, on AEO if we analyze the, the premium that I have received. And um, for United Airlines, a little bit less, but still 37%, nothing here to sneeze at. Okay, so these were the new trades uh, that I entered today. Let's take a look at... Uh, at another trade that I did, I actually closed the pen call. So wh what does this mean? Well, let's go back here and uh, let's talk about uh, pen. So PENN, uh, Pen National Gaming, switching back here to this, I actually sold puts um, at a strike price of 75. And as you can see, pen has been trading below 75. So I did get a sign and I'm now the proud owner of 1,300 shares of pen. So what I did last week, if you're zooming in here a little bit, so over the past few weeks, I have been selling calls. And here's the deal. Uh, when you're selling calls, so last Friday, I sold uh, the 77 call. This means that as long as Penn is staying below 77, I'm collecting premium. If it moves above 77, then I will get called away. And this means that I have to sell all my 1300 Penn shares uh, at a price of 77. Now, the good news is I bought them for 75. So in this case, I would make uh, $2 times 1300. So $2,600 in addition to the premium that I have, uh, that I have received. And uh, so here's what happened last week. Last week, I was able to sell uh, pen calls uh, for a whopping $1,430. And this morning, I could already close them out and buy them back for $286. So for, for three days, for a three-day trade, this was August 5th. Well, technically, it's a four-day trade, right? 
Uh, but for four days, I was able to uh, bank $1,144. And uh, hey, this is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, so this is where, ding, 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 markets are closed right now. Anyhow, I like that. And so I bought them back because right now, if uh, pen moves higher, I can sell calls again. So uh, just looking at these four trades, and then we'll talk about the LVS trade here in a moment. But these four trades alone uh, thus far made $2,200, $2,208. And that's not a bad start in the week, considering that today is only Monday. So let's talk about LVS. And uh, that is a, an important trade here because um, I entered LVS at a strike price of 58. So I was selling puts and I got a sign because as you can see, LVS has been falling ever since. So I am uh, the proud owner of, there we go. Um, let me just go back and show you exactly. So LVS, I do own 1700 shares. There we go. Okay. So going back to the iPad, I own 700 shares at $58. Now, as you can see right now, LVS is trading at $40.64. So this means it, it takes a while until I can sell calls again. So this is where I like to fly what I call rescue missions. And this means that if a stock has dropped around 30%, then I start selling more puts with the idea of lowering my cost basis. And this is what uh, I did this morning. So if you're going back to the trades, and uh, let me just do this, then you will see that I sold nine puts at a strike price of 39. So here's what I did. Uh, let's just get rid of this one. So here on the stock, obviously, duh, I'm down. Down, uh, I don't know, like uh, 20, $30,000, something like this. We can look it up here in a moment exactly. But here, my idea or what I did this morning as part of the rescue mission. There we go. OK. I sold the 39 put. This means if LVS goes below 39, I'm getting assigned and I sold nine contracts. I'm getting assigned another 900 shares of LVS. Now, LVS is Las Vegas Sands. Uh, I believe it's also a, a value company. Right now, they're hurting because they have a lot of overseas business in Macau, and Macau is basically closed right now. So this is why uh, we have to be patient until this comes back up. And so the idea here is, and now we are using um, our handy-dandy calculator. And the cool thing is that uh, with all the trading that I do, I just need this simple calculator because um, I sold 1,700 shares at $58. So this is uh, if you take 1,700 on our handy dandy calculator times 58, it means that for these 1,700 shares, I paid $98,600. Okay, so $98,600. If I'm getting assigned, if I'm getting assigned, I will have another 900 shares. Uh, let's actually move this up there. So it would be an additional 900 shares at $39. So for these 900 shares times 39, I would pay a total of, there we go. Eh, hard to see. You get the idea. 35,100. This means that uh, I own shares worth uh, 133,000. 700, but now I have 2,600 shares. So if you take the 133, 700 and divide this by 2,600 shares, this means that now my cost basis, and uh, probably should erase a few things here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's just do this. You can rewind the video if you want to see the numbers again. So uh, this means that my new cost basis is at $51.42. Now, again, I'm still losing money as long as it is below 51.42, but you see, it's easier for this stock 
to recover and for me to be able to sell calls at this price versus sell calls at 58 because I do not like to sell calls that are below my cost basis. So my goal here is to lower my cost basis and uh, I'm flying these rescue missions in one third. So right now I only took a third of a position here so I can do this two more times if LVS chooses uh, to trade even lower. And if you look at a, at a weekly chart, um, then we see that uh, during the pandemic, and I'm just zooming out here again, and uh, you, you see during the pandemic, uh, we were as low as uh, what? Here maybe 34, and a few times over the past few years, so in 2012, we were also trading at uh, at 34 uh, in 2015 and 2016 as well, and then in 2020. So if LVS keeps dropping, I can still fly two more rescue missions, lowering my cost basis. So in the in the first swing here uh, for rescue mission, I'm lowering my cost basis to $51, and uh, then subsequently, um, so from 51 42, I will keep lowering it. Now, with LVS, I already collected uh, quite some premium. And uh, if you look at the premium that I received for this rescue mission today, it's another $500 that I made on this one. So we will see. We will see what happens there. And I know that many of you are also interested in my ride position. So this is another stock uh, where I got assigned here. We have uh, weekly charts. Oops, let me share my screen. So I got assigned at uh, 2150 and I, I did. I completed all three rescue missions. And uh, so my cost basis is now $12.86. And as you can see right now, the uh, the current price is at half of this. Uh, I mean, not even $6. So they report earnings, as you can see here in two days. We'll see what happens there. And honestly, this one uh, where I violated one of my main rules that I have for the wheel strategy of only invest in value stocks, right? And I mean, every stock that you have seen thus far has been a value stock. Right is not a value stock. It's a growth stock. And that's what I said earlier. Growth stocks have a high risk potential. And I should have never done it. But uh, hey, woulda, coulda, shoulda. In hindsight, we are all the best traders. But uh, here, at least I know what I did wrong. I'm fixing it. I'm flying my rescue mission. This is my plan in the same way as I do it with LVS. I've done it uh, last year also on TQQQ. I've done it on a few other stocks. Um, can't remember what exactly. You probably find the other videos here on this channel. You can just look for rescue missions and uh, they will probably pop up here. Anyhow, so we shall see what is happening here. Anyhow, so this is what's going on. So on right, I'm down. Um, how much am I down on right? It's it's around a hundred thousand. Let's just uh, quickly check and look and see. And I'm going over here at uh, year to date, so that you see on uh, right, it's uh, eighty six thousand. Let me share this with you. So uh, overall, I'm down uh, what one hundred three, but I already made seventeen thousand in premium. So that uh, actually says 86,000. I know it's a little bit ha hard to read, but that's what I'm down on this account. So obviously that's not good. Uh, we shall see. On LVS, I'm down uh, $23,000. So you get the idea. And uh, these right now, if you take a look at this, these are the only two where I'm down. All the others, all the others are nicely profitable. But hey, this is why I, I'm sharing here with you what I do. This might not work for you. It might not be a good trading strategy for you. And, and that's fine, right? No worries. Oh, before I forget, I wanted to share uh, what I did today. Um, so PowerX Optimizer, um, with the PowerX strategy, I ran the scanner and uh, we had a bunch of stocks popping up here. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stocks popping up. And as you can see, most of them received a frowny face from me, only one I liked, which was MUR. So here the idea was to buy uh, 250 shares uh, at a price of 22.04. And I believe it never got up there. So uh, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at MUR. See if I got in there. No, 
I did not. Oops, I'm on weekly charts. Uh, let's switch to daily charts here. So on daily charts, my entry price, as you can see here, uh, let's go back to the PowerX Optimizer. My entry price is 2204. It says it right here. So only buy if it goes above 2204. In mind, 2204. As you can see, it never went up today. The day's range was from 2081 to 2160. So right now, I did not get into the trade. I placed it. And uh, since not right now the exchange is closed, uh, this order expires worthless. For tomorrow, I'll run the scanner again to see uh, which stocks I like best. And based on this and the flags that I distribute, um, I will then trade the stocks. By the way, uh, if you would like to learn more about these trading strategies, I highly recommend that you get any of these books. They're only $4.95. I'll link to it in the description. Or there's also videos on this channel so um, you can you can watch these videos here and uh, take a look, see what's happening and how I'm trading. Okay, now I know that I promised that I will, let me just switch this off here, uh, that I will answer as many of your questions as I can, but hey, I went a little bit longer today, but uh, let's see what, uh, what questions and comments you have. By the way, if you found this useful as I'm going through my trades here and if I'm talking about a little bit about value investing, growth investing and talk stock trading strategies, if you find this valuable at all, I would appreciate it if you could give me a like because this way I see if you're liking these videos and I'll do more of those that you like and to do less of those that you don't like. Okay, so don't, don't hit the not like, just hit like if you like it and otherwise don't do anything. I mean, you know what, you can do whatever you want, you're adults. Okay, anyhow, so good to see you, Chrissy, good to see you. And uh, yeah, I'm back, I'm back. Terence is here, uh, very interested in learning his technique. Okay, uh, hope Terence that you got a little bit of an idea. Again, I have more in-depth video, I'll link to them in the description here. Okay, Hans from Germany, good to see you. All right, good. So, Let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, it's good to see everybody. I see a lot of highs here and uh, yeah, Don says both excellent books. Uh, great to have CVM back after the break. Yeah, I told you in the last one, I took a few weeks vacation here, uh, but why not? Uh, so anyhow, I, I did sell a, a, a E O puts. It's almost like uh, learning the alphabet, right? <laughs> anyhow, you get the idea. Um, so uh, GP Peterson says you ignore put premium collected for the cost basis. Yes, there's a difference between the cost basis and the break even. So the cost basis is only the average price of the shares. And then if you're subtracting the premium from this, this is where you get your break even. So you can sell uh, calls above the break even. I prefer to keep the premium if I can. So I usually go for the cost basis or above here. Okay. So uh, yeah, John, a uh, similar question here. I do not because if I if I sell it at the cost basis, I keep all the premium, right? If you if you say, you know what, I'm forfeiting the premium, I just want to get the heck out of this trade, then you can actually deduct the premium. This is how you get your break even. So two terms you need to know, the cost basis, which is the average cost basis, so the average share price for all the shares that you bought, and then the break even, but great point, great point. Okay. Uh, so. AEO is about to fall another leg down. We will see. And you know what? It can do it as long as it does it after Friday. I don't care. And even if it does it before Friday, right? And I'm getting assigned. I like AOE. It's where we go back to value investing versus growth investing. I don't think that AEO can be labeled as a growth company. Uh, I consider them more of a value company. So we shall see. And yeah, Kathy, hindsight is 2020. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. What does it mean hindsight is 2020? I always like to say, in hindsight, we are all the world's greatest traders. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. However, this is not how we make money in the markets. <laughs> Anyhow, good, good, good. Okay, um, just wanted to confirm his approach. Cool, cool. Uh, Gunnar says, I know really, a ride really sucks for you. Tell me about it. Yeah, <laughs> it does. But seeing what you do to try and rescue the situation is really worth a lot to me. And we'll see how it pans out, right? I mean, this this can be a super uh, expensive lesson for me. And I might give back most of the money that I made thus far this year. I will still have profits, but uh, it could be that if Rye just continues to go down, that it sets me back to, to zero. 
which uh, all things considering is not too bad, right? Uh, but but I, I still should have some some nice profits here, and we'll see. Uh, we I'll, I'll keep you posted here. I will keep you posted here. Okay, good. And uh, Tony says, uh, yeah, thanks for taking for one for the team. Hey, trust me, not one for a. Uh, I don't like taking one for the team, but it happened to me, and I'm showing you what I do. And you might agree with my approach, or you might disagree. That's up to you, right? Uh, so I don't force you to trade the way how I force. My intention here is to show you the real life of a trader. And in a real life of a trader, you have winning trades and you do have losing trades. And honestly, I think what I've learned in my career, it's more important uh, what you do with the losing trades than what you do with the winning trades. You see, the winning trades, they always take care of themselves, don't they? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, SA Jing, uh, any other options training videos? I believe that there's a few more on the channel. Just look for options um, and you'll see. Uh, there's a search bar somewhere here on top uh, above the video where you can search the channel. Just do it for option. Okay. So um, Big Harry Pecker says, what software are you using to keep track of your profits and losses? Um, I have my own trading log uh, that we also make available for mastermind members here. Um, and this is, you can use just an Excel spreadsheet. I mean, you don't have to go fancy. We're planning to incorporate a trading lock into the Power X strategy. I'll tell you more about this in another video here. We shall see. All right, good, good, good. So uh, let's see, uh, Steve is asking, what minimum account size do you recommend uh, for your mastermind program? You see, I, I think in order to trade the wheel strategy that you should have at least uh, twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars in cash, and it would be great if you could use this in a margin account so that you have forty to fifty thousand dollars in buying power. Um, I believe this is the best because this way I can help you to make a quick return of your investment on the mastermind program. Uh, if you're right now at a point where you have a smaller account of maybe two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars, I mean grow your account first. Uh, this is why I'm doing the videos and I hope that these videos already help you to grow your account and uh, hopefully they help you to avoid some costly mistakes because in the markets, trust me, people always think in the markets it's the bull versus the bears. It's not. It's not. It is not also the, the market makers above everybody else. It is the educated versus the uneducated. This is the true fight in the market. And just by you watching these videos, you are getting to the group of the educated, right? And there's too many traders who bring a knife to a gunfight. And you are right now gunsmithing your gun. I don't know. That's a weird, uh, <laughs> you get the idea, right? Uh, by you taking the time to get more educated about the market, trust me, you will be way ahead of people who are just YOLOing it. You only live once, all in on one of these meme stocks, right? I mean, just take the time to educate yourself. Anyhow, um, cool, cool, cool. This is fun to do this coffee with Marcus. And I don't know about you, but for me, time is flying by. Time is flying by when you're having fun. I'll be back with another coffee with Marcus later this week. And as you know, every morning we're doing a stock market update. So tune in, subscribe to the channel and watch any of the videos that are hopefully popping up right now. These are cool videos that are perfect for you. The YouTube algorithm always find the best video for you. So anyhow, take a look at these videos and I will see you very soon. Take care.